Once we are sure that the patient has polycythemia vera, we fulfill a diagnostic criteria. Then the next question is whether the patient needs a therapy. Now, all the patients are at the risk of a blood clotting if they have uncontrolled red blood cell count. It is a standard practice to do a phlebotomy or bloodletting to decrease the hematocrit, a measure of the red blood cells in the patient's blood, to below 45%. That is now very well established in prospective randomized study that that should be the goal of therapy to maintain the hematocrit below 45%. Almost all the patients are also given baby aspirin unless there is a contraindication to make blood flow easier because of the effects on the aspirin on the blood cells. The next step is to assess the risk of thrombosis within the patient's pool. There are patients with polycythemia vera that would have a lower risk than the others for a blood clot. And two factors are traditionally used to assess that. It's age over 60 or history of blood clot which would make a patient at a high risk for blood clot. Conversely, if none of this is present, the patient is at a risk that is lower than otherwise. So patients with a low risk are usually not treated beyond the phlebotomy and aspirin, when a patient with a high risk are usually given cytoreductive therapy to control the blood cell count. Goals of therapy for patients who have polycythemia are um, probably divided into bro two broad categories, well, and perhaps they um, intercorrelate. The uh, first one is to uh, optimize the blood parameters, uh, reduce the risk of thrombosis because these are intercorrelated again, and then also symptom uh, control. Uh, for a patient who is asymptomatic, it's difficult to say, well, I want to control the symptoms because sometimes initiation of cytoreductive therapy may be problematic for them because they will develop symptoms which they didn't have in the beginning. So I think uh, we need to um, uh, decide, determine what is the goal before you go on uh, treating someone, and that's generally speaking is based on risk stratification and symptomatology. So that's how I would address it typically. Leukocytosis has been um, suggested as one of the uh, factors that could increase the risk of thrombosis. Um, it's never been evaluated in a prospective fashion, but there are several studies that suggested that uh, leukocytosis um, may um, not only risk of thrombosis, but it may also be uh, associated with an increased risk of uh, myelofibrotic transformation and even acute leukemia and shortened survival. So um, it, it's something to be um, monitoring. And I think, to me, the way I think about it is that it's a reflection of uh, uncontrolled myeloproliferation, basically. The therapy of polycythemia vera in 2017 remains at its core a strategy for decreasing the risk of thrombosis and bleeding. We clearly are hopeful that it will have a favorable impact on symptoms, spleen, and other aspects of the disease, including in the future, even hopefully decreasing the risk of progression. But without question, the current therapeutic goal is to decrease that risk of thrombosis and bleeding. Therefore, on that basis, we use the risk assessment, which again is really around that risk of thrombosis and bleeding, in the selective determination as to who should have cytoreductive therapy with active medications. All patients with polycythemia vera need to have control of the hematocrit, regardless of what risk strata they fall into. Uh, patients with polycythemia vera are managed with a low-dose aspirin, regardless of their risk strata. So it's really, we use that risk strata for determining who should receive cytoreductive therapy.